It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us back on the show is our good friend Rick Becker, here to talk about a very important conversation to be having with our children, but maybe not an easy conversation to have. So thanks for even being here, Rick. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Kyle. Thanks for having me on. Can you talk about how you ended up visiting your future, and I'll put quotes, I, I like how you refer to this, your semi-permanent residence in the cemetery with your teenage daughter? Yes, we were, um, some time ago, I guess it was uh, last year sometime, my wife and I decided to invest in grave plots as we're looking ahead to the future, and uh, there's a whole story behind that as well, but um, we uh, purchased them in a cemetery in uh, St. Joseph Catholic Cemetery in Mishawaka, and one day uh, we were driving home from a, an event with our 13-year-old, our youngest, and uh, drove by it, and, and I have been taking the kids by there, the older kids, to show them this is where this is where mom and dad are going to be someday, and I want to make sure you know where it is so you can bring your families here uh-huh. um, and come pray for us. So I, Catherine, we hadn't brought by, so we went by there. She's our youngest. And uh, the first thing to note is that she didn't think it was weird, which I take great pride in, that somehow we've been able to communicate to her in her 13 short years so that... Number one, for Christians, death is not something to be afraid of, right. and that graveyards and cemeteries, in terms of visiting them, is something that's uh, more or less normal. So she said, sure, and we stopped by and was able to show her. We said a prayer for the, the people there in the cemetery, and then we kind of explored, looked at the dates and the names and kind of speculated about the stories behind all those uh, people who were buried there, and it was a, a delightful kind of uh, part of our our afternoon. And um, yeah, that's what that that the story is about. So it's about it was about not only about uh, fostering respect for the dead, but it was also a, a moment that a uh, little epiphany moment for me that um, we've done something right <laughs> in in how we've raised our kids, and I'm very happy about that. Well. Let's talk about the concept of visiting the seminary in the first place. I think that's something that... Cemetery. What, what did I say? Seminary. Yeah, seminary. <laughs> <laughs> we want to visit seminaries, too. Make that normal as yes. well. Visit <laughs> seminaries and cemeteries. What's the difference? No. Uh, so, <laughs> this idea of visiting the cemetery, obviously some people are a little creeped out about it. Like We don't want to go there, even though we have relatives in there. Why would we go to pray in a cemetery when you can pray for the dead anywhere. Well, that's true. Um, I suppose the extension of that, if we take that argument to its logical conclusion, we could uh, say, as many of our Protestant brethren do, that why pray in church? You know, why not have worship service in the state park? Uh, Hmm. Which we can do, but there's something different about sanctified or or, uh, um, holy ground of cemeteries and being in the presence of the remains of our brothers and sisters in Christ, with whom we can still have a relationship. And it's one thing to be praying for the dead at home, which we should be, uh, and in church, but to be able to actually pray on site in the presence of their physical remains is something that the Church actually encourages to our benefit, because it strengthens that bond that we have with our departed loved ones. It helps us to remember that that's our destiny, that all of us are going to die. But it also uh, strengthens that idea that uh, our physical remains are still part of us and will be part of our glorified bodies, uh, God willing, someday in heaven after the resurrection of the dead at the end of time. And and in that regard, too, I don't talk about this in the uh, the article, but that's part of the reason, uh, in fact, that's the main reason why the Church encourages uh, burial as opposed to cremation. That there, and in fact, that's something that, that's worth some reflection, because the Church does allow cremation, and while cremation is allowed in the Church, we still have to uh, respect the cremains, what we mm-hmm. call the cremains, in the same, that we re- the same way that we respect uh, buried, uh, the burial of bodies, but that the Church's preference, kind of our default, is burial for, that, for the very reason that I was just saying, so that we can go visit. Um, and we can spend time, in a sense, with our departed loved ones who are, in a way, still connected and will be permanently connected with their remains, um, God willing, at the end of time. 
Hence uh, the semi-permanent I, I went on a ramble there. But, no, no, uh, no, that's good. So kind of getting into the why to pray for the dead, but then how should we be praying for the dead? Sure. Uh, why do we pray for the dead? We pray for the dead because we believe firmly in the idea of purgatory. Uh, we believe that even though we tend to skip over that pretty lightly when we're talking about our loved ones, especially uh, dear grandparents and uncles and aunts who are very holy, and, and uh, we don't have any question to their ultimate destiny in terms of heaven, uh, we don't want to take for granted. The reason we have masses said in our tradition, we, we have masses said for, for people. We send people mass cards after uh, family members, after their, their loved ones die. And the reason we do that is those masses are being said in the same way that our prayers are being said for people as they are going through that purgation, that uh, time of, of cleansing of, of anything that holds them back from fully enjoying heaven, uh, which, is a, which is a way of thinking of purgatory. I mean, there's all kinds of ways of, of thinking about what purgatory is, but as, I've, as you and I have talked about in the past, purgatory is, is not a uh, subset of hell. It's a suburb of heaven. It's, it's on the outskirts of heaven, and it's everyone who is in purgatory is on their way to heaven. It's the full experience of heaven, and our prayers can speed them on their way in, in a sense, um, if you want to think of it in, in linear terms, in kind of temporal terms. But at the same time, and this is, this is the value of actually visiting the graveyard, <laughs> um, at the same time, the, those who are in purgatory, just like the saints in heaven, can pray for us as well. Uh, so, as, as uh, I, I forget what the quotation is exactly, but um, in one of the documents that I quote in the article, um, the Church talks about that relationship, that ongoing relationship that we have uh, with our departed brothers and sisters. Whether they're in purgatory or not, we can pray for them, and if they're already in heaven, our prayers, our prayers aren't wasted. And they can pray for us, whether they're in, in purgatory or, or in heaven. And so it's this, uh, it's like a, it's really a, a way of, of kind of strength, like I said, that strengthening that idea of the communion of saints, you know, a church militant, the church suffering in purgatory, we're the church militant, church suffering in purgatory, and then the church triumphant. We're all one church, and uh, there's, no, there's no place that better illustrates that than visiting a Catholic cemetery. Hmm. We're talking with Rick Becker. He has an article you should check out from the National Catholic Register. It's Respect for the Dead. Here's a way to normalize it for kids. Really a, a great article. And one of the things that you talk about in it is your terminal campaign. Can you explain what that is? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, that uh, it's, And it's not just about uh, getting used to the idea of... Uh, of praying for the dead and visiting cemeteries, but also um, being comfortable with talking about death. And it's interesting, I, you know, as I was getting ready to talk to you today, I was thinking about, uh, we've talked about death and dying before. I'm a nurse. I used to be an oncology nurse. I'm a, I'm a nursing instructor now. Mm -hmm. So uh, issues of death and dying come up all the time. It is important to remember. I mean, it's very easy for us to say, especially for those, who are, for those of us who are in good health and relatively young, it's easy to talk about how we shouldn't be afraid of death. That's true. Though I, I have to say, uh, I certainly, as speaking, speaking as a healthcare worker, I do understand why people can be afraid of dying. But we do have to separate the idea of how we approach dying from how we approach death. I think it is absolutely true that as we grow in faith, as we grow in the spiritual life, as we grow in holiness, that any fear, any kind of uh, vestigial, any vestige of, of uh, a residual fear of death itself uh, will fade uh, over time. And, and uh, clearly, if we believe in the hope of heaven, then death isn't something that uh, we fear. It's something that we just get ready for, uh, especially if, if we can anticipate uh, the beatific vision, that we anticipate that celebration for all eternity in the life of uh, in the life of the Trinity in heaven, but dying itself can be fearful, uh, depending hmm. on our health, depending on what we might be facing in terms of uh, um, kind of illness and disease, and uh, and certainly people's experience of loved ones who've gone through dying the dying process. It can be a it can be a fearful thing, but that too we can educate ourselves about, especially because the thing that people fear the most about dying is pain. And that good pain control uh, is an absolute must today. And, and the more that medicine and, and pharmaceuticals, the more we advance, the more that we can really keep pain at bay to, to try to 
make the dyeing process uh, as good as possible. And, and that is something that it should be a goal. It should be a goal that that dying, the end of life should be something good. We talk about a good death in the Catholic tradition. And a good death means that you're doing it as comfortable as possible, but also being reconciled with those who you've been estranged from, and certainly with God before uh, that final moment of death. So yeah, so death, when I talk about my campaign, I'm talking about normalizing it, uh, that we're not afraid of it, where we can talk about it openly, and then after it happens, you know, it's it's not something that we kind of hide away, but it's something that's uh, it's kind of odd to say it this way, but that death is a normal part of our life. So yeah, that's, it's one thing for us to be able to understand this and process it ourselves. How do you suggest that we bring this up and educate our kids on it without really upsetting them or scaring them with the idea of death? Um, I would say one thing, especially for those, for those who have, uh, well, I mean, let's, let's, uh, the, the most obvious way is that uh, take kids with you to funerals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> take them with you to wakes. Uh, if you're going to go to a funeral awake, make take your kids, either the youngest kids, with you, and they'll naturally ask questions. I mean, it's a teach what what we call an education and family, you know, homeschooling and family life, you know, teachable moments. And right. Can't think of a better teachable moment than that. But also, too, uh, loved ones on on things. We just celebrated Memorial Day, right? Uh, it's certainly a tradition in our country to visit, you know, put flags on. Uh, graves of uh, vets and and to visit cemeteries and honor them and um, Notre Dame there was a, I think there was a mass uh, in the cemetery on campus on Memorial Day they have every year for all the vets you know to take your kids to that and to stop by cemeteries and pray for the dead or if you're driving by there's a funeral going on you see a hearse have the kids stop and see uh, that prayer you know uh, that we pray for the dead and teach them that a prayer um, eternal rest granted to him or her, O oh Lord, and, and may perpetual light shine upon him. May you rest in peace. I mean, to make that a normal prayer that the kids learn and use in the family, just like the Hail Mary and the Our Father. And, you know, you asked earlier, I, I skipped over it, uh, but you asked earlier, how do we pray? What's the, nor- what's the best way to teach kids to pray for the dead? Same way you pray for each other. Like I, I mentioned in the article, uh, there are, I call them our permanent neighbors, friends of ours who have grave plots right next to the ones that we purchase. And <laughs> right. uh, one of our friends is already deceased, hmm. Debbie Ferdoso. And uh, for, with Catherine that day, we stopped and said a prayer for Mrs. Ferdoso. Just said a Hail Mary, said Our Father, and Glory Be, just like you would do for somebody else you're praying for. And uh, those are some of the ways that we, uh, we think that our kids are... Uh, are, are finding it to be a normal part of our family culture. So those are just some ideas anyway. All right. Well, people can check out the article. It's at ncregister.com. Again, it is on Respect for the Dead. And uh, the article is called Respect for the Dead. Here's a way to normalize it for kids. A great read. Check it out. And where can people find more about what you're up to, Rick? Uh, if you Google uh, God Haunted Lunatic, you'll find a bunch of my stuff. And um, I hope you find it good reading yeah god haunted lunatic thanks so much rick becker appreciate it all right thanks kyle thanks for having me on